Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Soul Monade. My name is Sonia Doswell. I am your host. We have a very exciting show in store for you today. We have a filmmaker, a director that is uh, somewhat in the house with us. We'll actually be interviewing him uh, via the telephone. He is in Washington, D.C. at the time. Jenks Morton is the creator, the director of What Black Men Think, and now he is preparing to release the film Hoodwink. So without any further ado, I'd like to introduce our guest here on Solmanad today, Jenks Morton. Jenks, how are you today? Uh, doing fine and, and happy to be on line with you guys and uh, loving technology right now. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Yes, amen to that. So I understand you you just uh, landed there in D.C., drove up from Atlanta, huh? Yeah, about 10 hours on the, on the road and uh, going to try to keep my, my wits about me to see if I can answer these questions uh, thoroughly and properly to give a, a good way to have a proper service before we go into the screening on the 2nd of August. <laughs> and I'm sure that you will, as this is your passion and uh, one of your life's greatest works as well. Um, before we get into the movie Hoodwink, though, can we talk to you, Jenks, just a little bit about your background? First of all, I just have to know, where did your mama get the name Jenks? <laughs> Actually, uh, it, it's from my father. Uh, my father's name Jenks. Uh -huh. His name comes from his grandfather, who was named James, and it actually used to be a third name. Uh huh. I love it. Very unique name. Um, and uh, you were born and raised where then, Jenks? I was actually born in Cincinnati, Ohio, but I, I was raised in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. So I've spent most of my life in, inside of the Washington metropolitan area. I just moved away from D.C. Uh, in February. I'm an Atlanta resident now. Ah, resident of Hotlanta, yes, wonderful city in the Great South, and I have to tell you, I absolutely love Washington, D.C., uh, especially uh, Washington, D.C. metropolitan. My in-laws are there in um, Silver Spring, Maryland, as well. Wow, wow, it's right down the street from me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, it's a fabulous city. It's always alive, isn't it? Yes, it is. It always is. I'm happy to be at home right now. Okay, well, let's just go on because, you know, our viewers have, have been writing in. They are excited about what you have to share with them today, especially those of you I know who are in the Des Moines area and in Waterloo because we have this fabulous event that's coming up. Um, so let's just go ahead and talk a little bit about the filmmaking. What exactly was your inspiration, do you think? Did, did uh, this, this drive to, to write and direct and, and be a filmmaker come on as, as a young boy, or was it later on in life? It was, it was a funny progression. I, I was in the music business 20 years ago, and I kind of walked away in 2000, 2001. But during that tenure during as a film producer, I'm sorry, as a music producer and record label owner, I learned how to cut music videos. So, what comes forward to about the year 2006, I took the skill set of being able to make and manufacture music videos and turned it into making short films. And take short films, and then I went into feature length documentaries. So, it was a progression from my entertainment background, but to use that skill set more so in social advocacy, so the issues that I, I try to advance through my film. Certainly, and that seems like it would be a natural progression and, and an easier progression in having that background. So did you study uh, filmmaking, uh, you know, the, the tips and techniques that, that maybe Tyler Perry has utilized or Spike Lee? Not, not at all. I, I never went to film school. Um, I, it's like, I, I explain it like this. If you were given a diagnosis of cancer today, you will do every bit of research that you can so that you will be as knowledgeable about that disease state as probably some of the best oncologists in this country. Well, I'm in a space of social advocacy. I'm trying to make positive change in the black community. I have to do the, the amount of research to make me uh, as competent as anyone else out there trying to advocate just through this medium, though, through the medium of film, to move the issues forward. Mm -hmm. And you are doing a spectacular job. Can you share with our viewers just a little bit of what the film, What Black Men Think, really was about, what that main key message was about? Um, the overarching theme around what I do is it's called the reconciliation and restoration of the black family. The specific vein that, that What Black Men Think kind of falls into is around the denigration or the castigation of black male identity. Or to put it, put it in short terms, why do we think bad about the brother? So uh, I took a couple of myths, stereotypes, misperceptions around black male identity and just dismantled them with the evidence and statistics 
I also took a little historical journey to show how the message of uh, integration and desegregation, assimilation kind of led to us taking on a, an improper construct around black identity. Mm -hmm. You know, I hope that you have the opportunity to get a greater exposure, you know, uh, CNN, uh, maybe Tom Joyner on radio. Uh, have you been uh, traveling the country and getting this message out? Yeah, I've, um, I've actually done Tom's show. I've actually, I was in Black in America, the first episode, the first installment. Um, just and, and around the country, you know, working the way I do, I've been able to spread this message out, but it's still... Well, the challenging thing, especially if you take this, the number one myth from what black men think, I could probably walk to any barbershop Saturday in the, um, are you in Sioux City or Des Moines or even the border loop and ask, are there more black men in jail or in college? And half the barbershop is still going to say jail. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah. what I do through that film is prove that there's never been, since they've been capturing data, more black men in jail than in college. Mm -hmm. And you do clear that up yeah. too. Now, uh, Jenks, I want to go ahead and just read something that I have here in my notes, and then I want us to go ahead and share the trailer if we can. This says, Hoodwinked is a documentary film that explores the most recent data released by the U.S. Census, the Department of Justice, the Department of Education, the Department of Corrections, and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, and highlights strides and achievements in the African-American community. Jenks Morton does a profound job of illustrating the internalized beliefs created by exploitive statistics statistics on African-American achievement promoted by the media, the government, and special interest. Hoodwinked integrates humor, live interviews, and expert commentaries from respected black scholars like Dr. Steve Perry, Dr. Juwanza Kunjufu, Dr. Mark Lamont Hill, Dr. Boyce Watkins, and many others to debunk the myths of black inferiority, excuse me, and the skewed perspectives of the modern era African-American experience. So I would like to go ahead and just move right into this trailer if we can Jenks and then let's talk about this film and about this event that we have coming up as soon as it's over. Probably in jail. In jail. Jail. Who taught you to hate? Are there more black men in jail or in college? Jail. jail. The texture of your hair. In jail. Who taught you to hate yourself? In jail. From the top of your head? In jail. Down to the soles of your feet? Who taught you to hate your own kind? What percent of black boys drop out of high school? Who taught you to hate the race that you belong to? What's the ratio of women to men on Howard? So much so you don't even want to be around each other. Why do I feel the need to throw out high numbers on negative questions? Do stereotypes actually help black women succeed? Pick which one five percent enrolls in college the most. You're saying that they have a high. You have saying African American females have a higher incidence of going to college than white women. And that's not true. That, I, I, I would. I, 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 that's absolutely not true. To, if you're suggesting that African American women are increasingly surpassing their male counterparts. If African-American boys and girls, as measured by state standardized examinations and SATs and ACTs, are among the lowest performers, it would be an act of God beyond anything that I've seen. Well, let me just say this from a biblical perspective. I mean, Proverbs 18, 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Taking on many leadership roles in the workplace, according to a study. And if you confess one of every three of you all are going to jail, then you just put the nail into the coffin. If somebody tells you there is a 50% graduation rate, you think that the opposite end of the coin is a dropout rate. Why don't we say what the stat says? The stat says one of every three of you are going to college. We need to stop trusting things that we see in the media because we have to understand that they are in the business of selling a story and crisis sells. You know, we, we see the image, we see Lil Wayne with a mouthful of diamonds and, and acting just like a complete ass. I think it has to do with what we decide to see in our people. Name a positive stereotype about black people in general. Hmm. I don't know any.
we can no longer doubt our greatness. That's an impressive trailer, I have to tell you, Jenks, if, if that doesn't get folks thinking and, and stimulate the senses. Um, uh, I'm sure challenging for most. Talk to me about this trailer. Talk to me about this film and these statistics that you're trying to debunk. Well, it's, it becomes so timely because, especially around what's happening with Trayvon Martin and the George Zimmerman case, how stereotypes or, or, or perceptions or how we kind of bottleneck or pigeonhole what it means to be an African American male in, in this you know, modern era of American society. The challenge is, is that black identity is usually defined and described by some of the more or the lower common denominators of the extremes of the social behavior and social normative behavior, i.e. when we're thugs or we're hood, hoods or, or you know, just a plethora of negative stereotypes. Mm -hmm. Well, what I use through Hoodwink is to say, here's the data, here's the evidence, here's the facts, here's what normative social behaviors look like for African American males, and it's far removed from the kind of denigration that we see in the media on, on the, the national circuit or any even special special interests and advocacy groups. They just kind of have missed the mark on what it means to be a black man in the country. Uh, true, and I'd like to bring up some of these statistics, if I, if I may, please. The state of black scholars, what is the ratio of black women to men in college? The total number of black women ages 18 to 24 in college is 958,000. The total number of black men ages 18 to 24 in college is 734,000. There's another statistic. Uh, are there more college-aged black men in jail? or in college. And I see in the documentary, you went around, Jenks, and, uh, and your representatives, and you asked folks on the street this question. It, it, was, it was shocking, the answers that were, that were coming forth, that in this day and age, they're still, uh, you know, they still believe this. Yeah, and that's a, a real specific cut on the, on the data. You're at, I asked, you know, what about college age? Because, we, you know, young African-American male get to real, real front of these negative stereotypes, but if you look at the ratio of college age black males to the ones that are incarcerated, it's like four and a half to one. It's, it's not even, it shouldn't even be a conversation, but again, the perception that's been inculcated in the heart, mind, and soul of African Americans is that black males, regardless of age, are, are just, we're just at the bottom of the totem pole of the American society. And, and one of the, the, you know, real astounding pieces of data that just came out of it, uh, and the newest, stuff that I'm doing. Black men enroll in college at parity with white women right now. Mm -hmm. And black women enroll in college more than anyone else in this, in this country. Yes, I see my, that right my, here. My mm -hmm. to, to the media and all of the, all the constructs out there who are putting forth whether they be black is where is the press release? Where is the, the where is the banner? Where is the celebration? In fifty years post Brown versus Board Board of Education, black women are in school Rolling in college more than Asian men, Asian women, white women, white men, Hispanic men, Hispanic women. They're number one. And black men are, are at, at parity with white women. Yes, and I see that. And if you've got to change the conversation from this deficit approach or, or inadequacies and as always advancing what the problem with black folks is and begin to highlight at least the counterbalance the successes of what we're having as a community. Yes, highlight and promote the the activities and the lives of uh, powerful uh, African American men in this nation who are great contributors to their families, to their jobs, and to society. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they, they the normative social outcome for black men, and this is a hard one to wrap your mind around. Uh, most black men don't go to jail. Mm -hmm. Clearly. And here's the other. <laughs> Most black men don't go to college. The normative, social, the normative, the, 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 what most black men do, they graduate from high school, they, they get, a, get themselves a job, and they work. That's, that's the trajectory, and that's what most Americans look like. Most Americans don't go to jail, and most Americans don't go to college. But we've set up this kind of false dichotomy. Like, if you don't go to, you know, if you don't go to school, you know you're going to go to jail, which is, is old, wise tale garbage. And this junk science, that, that the advocacy groups have been using to promote their agenda has denigrated an entire generation of black males as well as the black community. 
And setting it up for failure for the next generation as well. If I can just share the statistic with our viewers, I have the total number of black men ages 18 to 24 in prison or in jail is 164,000. The total number of black men ages 18 to 24 in college is 674,000. Yeah, that's about four, it's about four, four, half to one. And it, and it shouldn't even be a conversation, but I, I challenge you or any of your listeners to walk into the beauty shop or the barber salon or the barber shop on Saturday and ask that question. Mm -hmm. uh, there are more black men in jail or in college, 18 to 24. Watch what happens. You could start a war in a barber shop on Saturday with that question. In I, 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 I just moved to Atlanta. I've had a grown man get in my face like he wanted to fight me. And I didn't know what I was talking about. Yes, I agree. And if you notice there on the trailer, uh, most of the individuals that you asked were African American. And so it's not just that this is a perception of Caucasians or of others of another race. This is the belief and the perception um, predominantly within the African American community. And, and this, is, this is just so unfortunate. The truth must be yeah. told. I'm gonna ask. I want to insert right there. There's no white people. I don't even care what they think. I really don't care what they think about us. Right now, I don't care. Mm -hmm. I, I, what I care about is the heart, mind, and soul of our people. Mm -hmm. What do we think about each other? Mm -hmm. I meet Sonia for the first time via the air. If I'm carrying stereotypes in my mind, misperceptions around black female identity, it, I, I want to know how many baby fathers you got. Are you a gold digger? When's the last time you dropped it like it was hot? All of that garbage. And that gets in the way of us connecting in a real and a significant way with each other. Which clearly happens. You know, kind of say with marriage and relationship stuff. Which clearly happens in this race, just like in other races. But of course, it's just the, the negative that is always highlighted, talked about, and promoted in the media. Yes, always, always. We, 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 like, we catch a short end of the stick in the, in the media. And you know, there's a lot of constructs and a lot of propositions going around with this George Zimmer. I think I'm going to throw my, my name in the hat probably next week that's around. i got a couple of pieces I need to write about it. But I think if we begin to believe the best in us and the best about each other, then we can begin to curtail and the, and the larger white construct cannot get away with this kind of denigration of black identity. Exactly. What kind of message is this that we are uh, sending to our children today of this generation? Yeah, and if you saw from the trailer, again, I've had segments of movies where I edit where it puts me in tears. And that, that segment from that movie where I go and ask black people, black, these are at, at HBCUs, 18 to 24-year-olds, name a positive stereotype about black people, and they cannot do it. It's one of the most heartbreaking things that I've ever had to do. Yes. Their, their, their entire lives, not just from the larger white society, not just from the media, not just from the, 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 the local church, but from their own families and their own peers. From home. Never been given one positive jewel or gem of who they are. Let's put that question ask. Tell me something good about yourself, and they can't do it that they are a child of God, that they are highly favored, that they have a bright future, that their destiny is, is, is bright, that their path is laid out before them, that they can achieve anything that they set out to accomplish. Yeah, and that, that those are good arts. We can give those to children in general. But I mean, real specifically, give me a positive statistic about black people. Mm -hmm. They can't do it. Mm -hmm. They can tell you all about incarceration. They can tell you all about dropout. They can tell you all about teen pregnancy. And in this movie, I prove all three of those to be myths. Well, they'll give you all the garbage that, 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 that flooded into our community, like what I call from the, you know, the not-for-profit industrial complex. Because the, the thought leaders and the academics are taking a deficit model approach. They think the negative about black and then blanket it upon the entire group, which denigrates us in our entirety. I agree, and I just I commend you, Jenks, and I thank you for uh, putting your hand uh, to the plow for creating this film and for committing and dedicating your life uh, to the success of not only your own children but um, the children of this next generation. And I think it's not just even the children, Jenks, that, that will learn from this, but their parents, because like you even said at home, so often the message is coming from home. It's coming from the workplace. It's coming from school. 
and unfortunately it is coming from people in a position of authority. So I think that there are many who can glean from this film, can, who can learn, who can walk away with something and uh, wrong stereo, uh, you know, stereotypes and wrong mindsets can be changed and I think believe people can literally be delivered and set free from these strongholds. It, it really has because, I mean, uh, this, again, this, this mischaracterization of how, what it means to be black, it, it, it has a, it, it's like two prongs, and I, I keep trying to back to this, this uh, George Zimmerman deal. The larger white society, I don't really even care, and I can't hardly do anything about them right now because they don't have the empathy to understand what it means to be black in America. What I can deal with is the heart, mind, and soul of my people to renew that message restore who we were, the greatness of who we were, and then also impart the greatness of who we are right now. Yes. Change the entire paradigm of this conversation to make people say, like, look, we are, we are, you know, that whole we shall overcome thing and the marching that y'all want to do, I ain't got time for that because we are on a trajectory right now to accomplish great things if we just give this next generation coming along some encouragement, some acknowledgement, acceptance, and approval around what they are doing right now. And I know that that message is going out. I know that great change is going to come. And I know that dialogue will take place because right here in the state of Iowa, we have an event that is, is going to take place. It is called Hoodwinked Iowa 2013. You'll see it right there at the bottom of the screen. And so if y'all are around on Friday, August 2nd, come on down here to Des Moines, Iowa. We are going to be at the Art Center, uh, excuse me, the Des Moines Art Center's uh, Levitt Auditorium on Friday, August the 2nd, and then we will transition to Waterloo on Saturday, August the 3rd. So if you are interested in, in coming, please know that this is open to the public. There is no admission, and afterwards you will have the opportunity to, to speak with Jenks Morton himself. There will be open dialogue, there will be Q&A time, there will be, I, I believe great healing will take place. I believe Great healing will take place, Jenks, and um, yeah, change will come of this. And, you know, this is for all generations. Bring the little ones. Bring the teens. Bring the grandparents. Please, we send an open invitation to each and every one of you to come and participate in this community-wide effort. And uh, we would also like to mention that that we have a key sponsor and organizer. Matthew Gilbert is, is working diligently to put this project together. There are others who have come alongside him, uh, side by side, shoulder to shoulder, locking arms with, with him to make this happen. And I am hoping that, that this will just be the beginning. This will happen across this nation. And this message that Jenks has will go forth. So the information is there at the bottom of the screen. If you would like more information, you can go to Hoodwinked Iowa. 2013.com and if you would like more information about Jenks's film you can go to whatblackmenthink.com whatblackmenthink.com right here across the bottom of your screen well Jenks before we uh, close for today do you have any closing thoughts for our viewers here on Solmanad uh, I think I'm going to close it the same way that Trevor closes that we've come to a juncture in our history where we can no longer doubt our great We've been kind of misled, hoodwinked, let us say run amok, all that good stuff from Spice. They are a little homage to him, but we, I think that the, the renewed message inside of Hoodwink of restoring the heart, mind, and soul of the people is going to be a first step towards us reclaiming the greatness that we have kind of given away to the largest society. And amen uh, to that. You know, the name of the show here is Soul Monad, which stands for soul, mind, and body. And the very words that, that Jenks just shared is just a, a passion of mine. Uh, racial divine, uh, divide, excuse me, is, is a huge concern of mine. Um, sending out the right message, the positive message, and sharing the truth. We always put a great emphasis on the importance of being healthy, whole, and balanced in your soul, mind mind and body. Well, Jenks, I thank you so much for being our guest here today on Solmanad, and we will go ahead and do a follow-up. We will see you uh, when you're here in town over the weekend of the 2nd and the 3rd of August. So thank you for joining us here on Solmanad. Well, thank you so much, Diane. I'm looking forward to meeting you guys. 
Fantastic. Thank you. Have a wonderful evening and uh, welcome home there to D.C. Well, there you have it, folks. We just spoke with Jenks Morton. He is the director of uh, Hoodwinked. We don't want you to miss this event. All the information is there at the bottom of the screen. We hope to see you there. Uh, this message will be out on the websites. It'll be out on YouTube. It'll be out on all social medias. So look for it. Look for uh, follow the following information and uh, stay up to date. We will see you there. So y'all be blessed in whatever you put your hands to do. Until next time, ciao.